The Lord be with you. We begin our worship this morning, the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 590. true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call today and serve in the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. 
Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Bless are all who take refuge in him. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in 
Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Be God. Please rise for the singing of our triple hallelujah and for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. When he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together this morning the confession of our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children forward for the children's message. I see that. All right. Swoosh down. Yep, we got everybody in here. We got everybody. We got plenty of room. There you go. Yep, even the littlest one. There we go. All right. Very good. Great to see everybody up here this morning. Well, you notice I don't have my bag with me because what we're going to be talking about was way too big to fit in the pastor's bag. Okay? So what we're going to be talking about is right here. I'm going to roll it out for us. You know what this is? That's right, it can be for babies, but it also can be for adults. We call it the font, F-O-N-T. Fancy word, you won't use it in any sentences today, probably at all. But we call it the baptismal font, because if I take the lid off, you see inside here, there's this little bowl. Now, this bowl could be any size, of course, but it just also... It could be any kind of bowl, too. You're right. You're right. Of course it can be, because this bowl is important because it holds something. What, do you, what does this bowl hold? Water. You all got it. That's right. It holds water. Not any kind of special water, just good old Strasbourg water. Okay? That's all that goes into this bowl is Strasbourg water. And you say, that's all? Yes, that's it, because... I do put it on their head. That's right. See, because see, that's what baptism, that's right, I baptize them. That's right. That's what baptism is all about because baptism isn't really about the water. It's about the word of God. Now, again, remember, Jesus is that word. Remember, he says, I am the word. He calls himself that. So we know that as Christians, it's not the water, but the water 
and the word of God. Because Jesus said to his disciples, go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, who else? Son and Spirit. Right, you've got the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's what Jesus said to do. And so some people say that you Lutherans, you make a big deal about baptism. You're right, we do. It is a special thing for a young child or an adult or anybody in between there to come forward and to receive the gift that God has given to his people, the waters of holy baptism. Okay? And so I want you to listen real closely this morning about what it means to be baptized for us as the people of God so we are now alive in him because we are his as he's made us his own and he's put his name on us through the waters of holy baptism. So, thanks for coming down this morning. You all can head back. And we will join together in the singing of our next hymn, hymn number 405. mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our epistle lesson from Romans 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what does it mean to be alive? Now, sadly, of course, science has given us many examples and answers to that question. But for us as Christians, we know that there is, quite frankly, a deeper reality to what it means to be alive. Which is why, as I said even to the children, baptism is so important to us as God's children. 
Yes, we Lutherans do make a big deal about our baptism. Some congregations even celebrate baptism birthdays and many other different kinds of things that they have to remind people of those dates. It is just as important as our own birthdays or anniversaries or whatever else it might be because it is the day that our lives were never ever going to be the same. Say, really? That's, that's quite a drastic thing to say. Well, it's true. Because at that time, we were baptized in two, as Paul tells us, the very death of our Savior. We were baptized into His death. Meaning that as now a human who was brought into this world by the grace of God, unfortunately in sin because of the sin of Adam and Eve, our lives were going to be different. We no longer were going to be focusing on sin, but rather on the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which is what allows us now as Christians to even ask this kind of question. What good comes from sin? I don't know if you thought about it that way, but let's think about it that way. What good comes from sin? Well, as you know, as well as I know from Scripture, the end result and answer would be absolutely nothing. It holds nothing for us, but death. That's what Scripture tells us. Sin leads to death. We know that because that's what we were born into. It is also what now what separates us from unbelievers. The faith that God has given to us so that we now know that we have been baptized into the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to read you a quote from Martin Luther's large catechism. It's a little lengthy, but you'll get it. This is from the large catechism from baptism. Therefore, every Christian has enough in baptism to learn and to do all his life. For he has always enough to do by believing firmly what baptism promises and brings. Victory over death and the devil, forgiveness of sin, God's grace, the entire Christ, and the Holy Spirit with his gifts. In short, baptism is so far beyond us that if timid nature could realize this, it might well doubt whether it could be true. Think about it. Imagine there was a doctor somewhere who understood the art of saving people from death, or even though they died, could restore them quickly to life so that they would afterward live forever. Oh, how the world would pour in money like snow and rain. No one could find access to him because of the throng of the rich. But here in baptism, there is freely brought to everyone's door such a treasure and medicine, that it utterly destroys death and preserves all people alive. You and I are alive in Christ Jesus. We know that yes, even though this body is going to die, we have been given, as he calls it here, this newness of life. To walk in the promise of our Savior. To understand what He is saying in His Word as even St. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. In Him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. See, that's why we make such a big deal about baptism. 
It's God's work for us that has now made us new. That is why it is such a big deal to God to talk about baptism as often as He does through the writers whom He has given it to write. That's why the church should and does make such a big deal about our baptism. It is transforming. It has brought us from darkness into light. It has made us who we are today, the very people of God. So that we are able now to read Romans 6, Colossians, and other passages throughout Scripture and understand why baptism is so important. Why it is encouraged and not just encouraged, but a command from God to do just that. That is why our text goes on then and says, For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will no longer die, never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death He died, He died to sin once for all, but the de- life He lives, He lives to God. See, you and I, and all believers, have been set free from sin. Oh, I know. We still had our confession this morning. And guess what? We'll have confession every time we have church. As well as we know that we are called by the Lord to confess our sin before Him. But that does not change the fact that we are no longer enslaved to sin. Just because there is temptation does not mean we have to sin. Doesn't mean we won't. But we also know that we are free, free to live in Christ because He has made Himself known to us. That's why it is so important to us to know that unfortunately the world tries to entice us with the fact that freedom equals sin. But it doesn't work doesn't work at all because the logic doesn't make sense. The logic that says that you do whatever you want to do, it's okay. It makes you feel good. That is not freedom. Scripture reminds us that that is slavery because we are slaves to sin rather than that which He did for us, intervene so that we may now know what freedom truly is. To walk in Christ in the repentance and the forgiveness of our sins. You and I and all believers have been set free. We are able to understand when we read Scripture when He says that we are to resist the devil. We understand. We don't have to sin just because there is temptation. And of course, some sins are easier to not do than others. But even when we do sin, the Lord has already said to us, Repent. You have been set free. That is why Christianity is so important for us as the people of God to bear that name that He has given to us. Listen to what St. Paul again writes. This is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. He says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions 
and desires. Why would we do that? Well, as I just said, because we know the difference. We know that sin holds nothing for us but death. But Christ is life for all who believe in Him. And it is only in and through Jesus that we are now able to gather this morning to worship, to study, to pray, to live. Each and every day is a new gift from Him for us as the people of God. To acknowledge the fact that we are going to sin and have sinned, and yet our life is to live for Him. To proclaim His name to one another in faith, and to grow in the knowledge that He has given to us. Which is why St. Paul is able to conclude, so also, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. It never seems to make sense in human minds. How can one be dead and alive? Well, as we see from the Word, it is only truly possible through Christ. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we are able to be dead to sin. It holds nothing for us in our Christian lives. It only reminds us of our past. When we were His enemies. When we hated Him. Yes, even that young child who is brought forward, that infant in arms, we say, that the Lord will be with them, even with the sin that they have done themselves. Yes, how is it possible for a child, an infant, to sin? Because they're sinners. That's what they were born into. And now, by the grace of God, and their parents bringing them forward, they have been brought into Christ. Their lives, as I said earlier, are never going to be the same. Your desire now as a child of God, baptized into His death, your desire is to live in the Lord. To love the Lord. To be that person that He's called us to be as His own, which is only possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are alive. Oh, you know that. You're here this morning. But even more so, you're alive to God. That's what it means to be alive. To be alive to God each day, knowing through His Word what He's called us to be and to do, and to trust in Him that it is true that we have been baptized into a death like His, we shall certainly be resurrected in a resurrection like His. That is His promise to us. That's what our lives now as Christians are all about. It's about dependence. I know, we don't like that word. But we must use it when it comes to our faith. Because we are dependent on Him for all of that now that He gives and preserves in us as His people. The church, we, the church, are dependent on Him because it's His church. Because we are His people. We are dead. Dead to sin but we are also alive. Alive in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In His name, Amen. Will you please rise as we join together in the singing of the offertory.
be seated. At this time, I invite all of our newly elected officials, as well as our older officers who are still serving, to come forward at this time. Plenty of room. Let's scoot over. Yeah, there we go. Very good. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that, in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility here at St. Paul's. You are to work with myself as pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacrament of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian education, instruction rather, of young and old, and that the erring are admonished and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you as office bearers in his church show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you and to which you now hold, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. To the congregation, beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women who you have selected to serve as officers here at St. Paul's. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. We do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I now install you as officers and reaffirm your office here at St. Paul's in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God enlighten and strengthen you in your offices and you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Will the congregation please rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for your work and your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed to be faithful to carry out their tasks, both especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation, strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven and the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that at the end of the days we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you 
with from the foundation of the world. Through Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may return to your, your seats. Congregation, please remain standing. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, you revealed your Son in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, bless all places where your people teach and learn. Guide teachers and students that together we would marvel at your creation and appreciate the depth of your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, grant that all, who, all those baptized into Christ would receive the boldness of your servant John to lead faithful and pure lives in this world, ever mindful of our promised heavenly inheritance. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Lord, your Son Jesus is the Christ and the true King of this world. Grant great humility to the rulers of the nations, that they would submit to the preaching of his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of your holy people. Lord, in your mercy, give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, or in any need. Especially, Father, we ask that you will be with Dwayne Hartman, who is in hospital this past week and yet has returned home, and also that you will be with Frances York as she continues her rehabilitation, as well as all the others on our names of our, of our prayer list this day. Watch over all expectant mothers and their children, that they may have a safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, in holy baptism you have opened the heavens to your children. Grant that all those baptized into Christ your Son would worthily, would worthily receive the heavenly feast of his body and blood for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal God, you have made us your own people by baptism and granted us your Holy Spirit to confess Christ in word and deed. We remember with thanksgiving those who went before us who pass the faith on to us, and who now rest in Christ from all their labors. Since we, have, since we have died with Christ through baptism, grant that we will be raised with him also. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty Father, as your Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep, you uttered your word and the world was created. In the waters of holy baptism you have spoken our names and declared us righteous. You have drawn us to, Christ, to Jesus, the light of life, and saved us. Let his light now shine through us, that others may see our good works and give glory to you. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all his peace. Just two brief announcements this morning before we join together in singing our final hymn. 
Uh, just a reminder that uh, this evening uh, begins our evening service that we're going to be starting at uh, Grace. That will be for both congregations at 530 Again, it's not that you have to come to that service if you came this morning. It is just another opportunity to worship uh, for us as Christians throughout the, you know, the body of Christ. So that will be at 5.30 starting this evening uh, and uh, over at Grace and the Lord's Supper will be given. Also, just if you have not heard about this uh, activity this afternoon, also at Grace, at 2 o'clock, Katie Shurman, who is a member at Grace, or was a member at Grace now, her husband is the pastor down in Champaign at the, at the uh, university uh, chapel, uh, she is going to be there signing her book, um, The Saints of, and I completely forgot the name, it's embarrassing, Whistle, Whistle Grove, The Saints of Whistle Grove. She will be there this afternoon uh, signing her book, as well as uh, there will be a little activities going on there, and that begins at 2 o'clock this afternoon over at Grace. We join together now in the singing of our closing hymn, hymn number 601. <laughs> 